All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to find the vertical and the horizontal asymptotes of a given function. So the first thing we wanna do is when we're finding our vertical asymptote, um, our vertical asymptote is going to, uh, is gonna tell us pretty much you know, what values uh, of our function are not going to cross on the x-axis. So what it's very similar to is actually finding the domain. And if you remember, when you have a rational function, um, to find the domain, you determine what values make it zero on the bottom. And whatever values make it zero are not going to be a part of your domain. And that's the same thing with the vertical asymptote, because if you think of a vertical asymptote, it's going to be a number, it's a vertical line that, uh, it's, it's a, a value of x that your graph does not have, or does, is not defined for. So to determine this, I'm going to set each one of my values, so when I want to find my vertical, vertical asymptote, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the bottom equal to zero for each problem. And this is just very similar to like finding the domain. And the reason why is, remember, when whatever values make it zero, that's not part of my domain. And since it's not part of my domain, it's not, a, it's not an x value in my function or my function is not defined for that value. Therefore, it's called what we call an asymptote. And meaning an asymptote is when you look at a graph, um, the graph is never going to have a value at that point. And we'll get into it when we talk about graphing, you guys will see what I'm talking about. So here, I'm just gonna add three. X squared equals three. Square root, X equals plus or minus three. I'm sorry, square root of three, yeah. right? So therefore, my vertical asymptote for this problem that means the x values are x equals plus or minus the square root of 3. Um, so we'll get into graphing later. Here, to find the vertical asymptotes, I set it equal to 0. And here, since I have a trinomial, I can't do adding to the other side. When I have a trinomial, I'm going to look at it for factoring. And I see that this can be easily factored into x plus 6 and x plus 1 equals 0. Therefore, my asymptotes are x equals negative 6 and x equals negative 1. I'll just try to make it a little bit quicker. Remember, just set each one of those equally to 0, and then you solve, right? Okay. Here, this one's very easy. I already know that x, equals, x um, is 0 is my vertical asymptote. So the next one is we need to look at our horizontal. So when you want to find your horizontal asymptote, what we need to do is we're going to look at, there's two things. We need to look at our leading coefficient. So we need to compare our, uh, our leading leading coefficients and degrees. So when you guys look at each one of these problems, we need to look at the leading coefficient and the degree of our leading term. So here, of each polynomial, so of the top and on the bottom. So you compare leading coefficient and degrees for your polynomial up top and polynomial to the bottom. Here we have a polynomial, but it's a constant polynomial. Now a lot of you might say, well, there's no x right there, right? Well, I can. I can put x to the 0 power, because any number raised, anything raised to the 0 power equals 1, right? 1 times 3 would be 3. So then the next thing I want to do is I want to compare my degrees, all right? And when my degree up top is less than the bottom, so when 0 is less than 2, the top is less than the bottom, right, of your degrees, um, my horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals 0. And I'm saying y because you know this is your y-axis and that's your x-axis. So my y value is going to equal 0. All right? 0. So whenever your top degree is less than your bottom degree, your leading coefficient, why am I doing that over there? y is equal to 0. Okay? Next one. 
What? Is that because you divided zero by two? Or no, it's just whatever. It doesn't matter if that was one and that was three. Okay. Whenever you have a top is large is smaller than your bottom degree, it's always just y equals zero. Okay. Always. So it doesn't matter if it's five and fifty. Okay. It's less. It's zero. It's less than. So y equals zero. Okay. Now, when you have that equal, okay, what you do is you take the number in front, which there's no number in front of here, right? So we write one. You take the number in front and you divide them. So whenever they're equal, so when you say like the top is equal to the bottom, what we do is we take our coefficients and we divide them. So we say y equals one over one, which is one in this case. Does that make sense? So whenever they're equal, so if this was like, if this was like a three fourths, then it'd be three fourths, right? So just always divide the coefficients. And then, now when we have, we can put a one there. Whenever we have the top is larger than the bottom, so you can say the top is larger than the bottom, we, uh, there is no horizontal asymptote. No horizontal asymptote. And we will, that means there's gonna be a slant, which we'll show in another video. But if you guys can just remember, whenever the top degree is smaller than the bottom degree of your leading term, then y, your horizontal asymptote would y equals zero. When they're equal, you take the two coefficients and you divide them. And here, one divided by one is one. And here, whenever it's larger than the bottom, there's no horizontal asymptotes. And that's how you find the horizontal and the vertical asymptotes. So basically, all you need to find out horizontal is the coefficient.